Welcome to the season of self-love, your daily dose of inspiration and encouragement. I'm your host, Naomi Banks, and I am thrilled to be here with you today. This podcast is brought to you by Ask Naomi and Elevate Me Self-Discovery. Are you ready to elevate your mindset and embrace the power of self-love? Or have you come to the right place? Each day we'll dive into topics that will empower and inspire you on your journey towards self-discovery and personal growth. Whether you're looking to cultivate healthy relationships, boost your confidence, or find balance in your life, this podcast is here to support your every step of the way. We believe that self-love is the foundation of living a fulfilled and joyful life. And together we explore practical tips, insightful interviews, and transformative stories that will leave you feeling inspired and motivated. So join me Monday through Friday as we embark on this daily adventure of self-love. Tune in to the Season of Self-Love podcast to start your day on a positive note and discover the limitless potential within yourself. All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. And welcome, my beautiful, my beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of the Season of Self-Love podcast. I am your host, Mammy Banks. And today we are diving into a very powerful theme today. And that's transformation. You know, the month that we are focusing on using our words impeccably, right? And how better to explore this by understanding the impact that our words can on our personal transformation. But guess what? Dr. Will is back with us this week. Our resident therapist, Dr. Will Washington. Hey, hey. It's good to see you. I'm feeling meaningful and magnificent. I like that meaningful and magnificent. Are you ready? Coming into this new transformation. The word. Yes. And that, that that's a big word. That's a yeah. big word. We, we, we talk about it a lot, but we don't really, we don't be, we, we don't, I don't know. This is a big word you chose today to be impeccable with. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see how we're going to work it. How, how you going to work it? Because you've been missing it at you for a week. Let's see how you going to work it. <laughs> Let's go. I'm, I took a vacation. So I'm back now. I didn't even know I was gone. <laughs> all right. So let's take a quick break and then we come back. We're going to talk about this transformation. All right. All right. It's your girl. You got us. Nami Banks here on the Season of Self Love podcast. And we'll be right back. What are some common barriers that prevent people from expressing? Hey, it's your girl. You got us. Nami Banks here from the Season of Self Love podcast. Yeah, I would say remorse. So shame and guilt is a very divided emotional. And these are one of the many amazing conversations um, that we have every day, Monday through Friday, right here on like the Season of Self Love podcast with myself, Naomi Banks, as well as our resident therapist, Dr. Will I'm Washington of Washington Wellness it makes us Institute. To the, Come by. The reality of our relationship with people. Come by. A lot of times we're afraid of how people look at us. And so that compassion can't enter. You can hit us on the website, website really the season of self love really podcast.com. Mm. to this with the truth. Is it? Washington Wellness Institute focuses on healing always. For me, if I look good, then I feel good. If I feel good, then I share the good. If I share the good, then I celebrate the good. If I celebrate the good, then I live the good. So I can be paid to be my greatest. But I have to learn the good to be the good. So, what does it take to be the greatest? It's as simple as a free 15-minute consultation. Be kind to yourself and heal always. All right, well, welcome back. It's your girl, the goddess, Nami Banks, here on the Season of Self Love podcast. And I am here with Dr. Will. What's going on, Dr. Will? Feeling grateful and good. Grateful and good, that's what I'm talking about. Well, today... Our impeccable word for today is transformation. And Dr. Mm-hmm. Will said this is such a big word. <laughs> now, I don't know what that means, but mm-hmm. he said it's such a big word. And I think what he means is it's a word that's very in-depth that we rarely talk about. Um, talk about our transformation or, you know, something that yeah. I've been living loud. <laughs> <laughs> that I've been living loud. <laughs> Transformation out loud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, out loud. Yes. But you, you know how we all start this. You know, we start this. Um, we kick it off with a nice guided meditation. But since Dr. Will, we missed you last week. We would love to hear your, your voice as you guide us through this meditation as 
we begin this episode. Yes, I would love to share the transformation meditation. So let's just get ourselves relaxed. Let's sit back. Allow ourselves to just be still. Take a deep breath in with your mouth, in with your nose, out with your mouth. Sorry. Allow yourself to breathe. I want you to picture yourself as a strong boulder, a strong rock, something just so heavy and still and strong. Now I want you to picture water like a river flowing, embracing and touching the rock, you being the strong rock. Allow that water to pass right by you, not allowing anything to move it not allowing the waves and the current to move you. Understand that this is the first form of transformation. It's recognizing how much potential you live by. Now focus that energy into what you will become. Do you grow bigger? Do you become more fluid? Do you go with the river? Do you become something else? Take a deep breath in with your nose, out with your mouth. And allow the transformation to speak to you. And as you slowly come back, Think about what you're bringing with you into today's conversation. What questions do you have to be the thing that you've always been waiting for? Slowly come back. Slowly come back. Slowly come back. Thank you, Dr. Will. Thank you. If you are new here to the Season of Self Love podcast, this is something that we do every day, Monday through Friday, to where we start off by grounding and centering ourselves before we get into the topic at hand. And today, well, the month of May is all about using our words impeccably. And today's word is transformation. Transformation. Mm. First that segment, let's talk about understanding the essence of transformation. You see, transformation is all about change and growth and adapting and evolving. So for you, Dr. Will, can you share your perspective on why embracing transformation is very crucial for our listeners? Yes, transformation is so crucial because you have to accept that once a transformation continues, it will finish. Change can stop. Adjustments can pause, but transformation does not stop until completion. And so it's important to understand what you're truly becoming and allow yourself to embrace it because it will happen because you are now worthy of that next transition in your life. Mm-hmm. That is why I say I live my out loud. <laughs> Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like literally, I um I can go back probably maybe 2019. I can mm. go back and look back in 2019. And why I say I can go back and look back in 2019, because I believe that's when I start sharing my journey. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Sharing my journey um through spirituality and just a healing that I was doing, not exactly knowing what that healing was or putting a name or label on it. I just knew there was something that I was doing. Um, and I remember I used to always make this saying, um, surround yourself by positive people, positive mind, positive spirit, surround yourself with positive people. That used to be my model for like five or six years that I just always just say mm-hmm. that. Um, and that was just to get me into that positive mindset. 
um, right. to prepare for whatever this anew is going to be in my life. You know, mm-hmm. um, it was one thing that I used to do all the time. And for some reason, I had stopped doing it. I used to do five-year plans. Remember the five, you do your five-year plan, you do your short-term plan, your long-term plans. I That's definitely have my last plan. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I did that for 2020, uh, 20, 2019. Yeah. No, I did it for 2016 Mm -hmm. into that. That was my last five-year plan. Yeah, Mm -hmm. see, see. And so I had stopped. For some reason, I didn't, I don't know if I didn't have the the urge or the willpower to do that, or it was just something else. Now, I'm just saying that it was something Mm. else that was causing me Mm. not to write those plans out. Um. Because usually when I have my plans, I'm, you know, as the year go, boom, mark it down, boom, mark it down, mark it down. And I remember my middle girl, my middle baby, I used to always tell my brother, my two daughters, everybody, you got your, your five-year plan. You got your short, you term. That's what all the time. Like, middle, that's your five-year plan. Yeah. Right, right, I remember sure. life coaches always asking me that too. The, my life coaches would always ask me that. What's your five-year plan? You only five-year plan. How can you be successful? Like, oh, wow. It's every five-year plan. Right. So that was the dialogue that I was telling them. And my middle child, she looked at me, she said, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in five years, mama. I I don't want to. What she told me is, I don't want to set nothing in stone. She said, because I want to allow myself to just grow and be free. (laughs) Now, when she said this, she was 12 years old. And I said, girl, if you don't go make no five years. <laughs> You're gonna be a graduate. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's great. But when she said that, I was like, oh my God. And you know, because I've always been yeah. like that. I'm like, okay, hold on. Even when right. I got into the adult industry, I had a five year plan. <laughs> like I That's said, hilarious. I, I was in a four year college making a five year plan. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> four year college in a no. five year plan. I did the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, boom, 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 boom. And my tw- at that time, she was 20, so she was like, Mm-mm. She said, I'm not about to be locked in or something that I'm not, you know, I'm not sure mm-hmm. that I really want to do. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. I understand it now, but then I did. I just thought she was just being smart. <laughs> <laughs> So you put that child's place. Right. Where you at? Like, like. But the thing Speaking is, is that she never did the fire Oh. oh, oh. And I was That's like, plan. She was like, no, not yet, mom. I'm still working on it. Even after she graduated high school, I was like, well, you know, she's like, I still ain't working on it. And my mom's like, forget it. Just leave it alone. <laughs> she's like, she's like, like, don't worry. I'm in it. I'm in my plan. Right. It's, you know, and I laugh about it now is because th- that's a part of my transformation is just coming out of that different mindset of what I was before and just allowing myself to go through the process of life, if that makes sense. The mm. process of life. Yes. So yeah. you said it better, like change is different because you can stop in the process of which what you think that you're doing that you in control of, but right. you still, it's like, how can you say it? transformation is like a inner, I don't want to say so, but it's like a, a inner layer of mm-hmm. evolution evolving within yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. what I'm feeling is, it's like subconsciously you're steady transforming into something. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think, you know, I think one of the best examples I ever saw was I love bodybuilders, mm-hmm. right? When they first start out, you know, and you just see them like making the adjustments, making the changes, see them doing the consistency. And then when they're finally ready for the show and their bodies are like at their peak, mm-hmm. right? Performance. And you're like, man, how'd they get that done so quick? Like, but you didn't see them the, the three, four times in the gym 
the, 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 the changes, all those changes and adjustments. And when they get to that point, it wasn't the fact that they got to that point is they created a lifestyle that could actually be confident in the lifestyle that they transformed mm -hmm. into. So we can see the physical representation of it, right? So it's an awing moment, but we didn't see the fact of that transformation. It's so natural over time that when it actually happens, you're not even aware of like, you actually handling yourself. You're just confident about the way you look. Even people that are starting to lose weight for the first time, right? After the 90 days, it's not even about, they're like, oh, I'm everything I needed to be. They're not even thinking that way. What they are is just more confident about what they want and they're more consistent. They, they're living the lifestyle. The transformation is the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You never talk about your lifestyle. You just do your thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times transformations we don't really recognize you're like, oh my gosh, I'm transforming. You're not actually saying that. You always look back and you're like, oh my God, look what I did. Mm -hmm. Right? That's that's that you you look back on transformation, you look back and think about where you were and now who you are today. Mm -hmm. And you're just you it's more of a gratitude and honoring of yourself. Yeah. You're honoring yourself. Yeah. I love that about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. Um was it was yesterday's show yesterday's show was the word was encouragement that was the word in, in, uh, mm. and i had to do, i what i did was i i chose someone that in my life that gave me encouraging words that allowed me to you know to help me mm -hmm. to become a better person or better yet to see myself in a better light and i picked one of my aunts when i was younger this woman i mean beautiful woman like my best friend here today like anything that i'm doing mm -hmm. she's very supportive but she's always spoken to me like literally always spoken to me and she actually was the one who taught me how to love my complexion mm. yes so yeah. you know back in the day in the 80s and 90s you know you know there were so many different names yeah. but this woman was like, no, you're beautiful. You are a black diamond. And never mm -hmm. knowing what a black diamond was, you know, because we always see the diamonds, you know. Yeah. And then I remember going into the encyclopedia. My mother used to have a whole bunch of encyclopedias. And I went in there and looked what black diamond was. And saw that it was a, a rare, it was a rare diamond. It was a rare form that was very unique. And I held on mm. to those words as I grew up. And so no one can never tell me anything about my right. my dark skin anymore. So when my when my girls look at me and they just the same hue as me, and they was like, "Mommy, mm -hmm. like how can you ask, girl? You gorgeous. You know what I'm saying?" And I just you know talk yeah. to, to them, but in the process of telling that story, I was looking back and I like literally saw me in her different places and homes when I went to go visit her and stuff like that. And it actually brought me to tears, but they were happy tears. They were happy yeah. tears. And during my break, you know, I, I I text her and sent her a beautiful, you know, text message. And, you know, she mm -hmm. right back to me, at me with it. And then I called her once I was finished with the show. And then she was like, are you getting emotional with me? I said, yeah, I am. And I said, because... <laughs> I don't think y'all understand how much I am appreciating my journey in life. Mm. I don't know. I might not talk to a lot of my aunts. I have nine aunts, nine. Wow. So I have been blessed. Um, you, you, when I say bless, blessed, <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's sometimes that my mom could not show up for me and they did. Everybody doesn't mm. have that. You understand what I'm saying? And so yeah. I acknowledge that. I acknowledge the growth and how I become the woman that I am. It wasn't just my mom. It was my aunts. It was my grandmother, mm -hmm. you know, that helped me to become who I am. So when they do see me as Naomi or whoever, it's still a reflection of them. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. It's a reflection of them. Wow. So when I speak, and I'm talking, I don't just talk mm -hmm. for me. I talk mm -hmm. to all of them because not that they don't have a voice. That's not it. For some reason, God didn't give them that to have a voice. And he led me here mm -hmm. to have a voice. 
Right. So when I say about transformation out loud, that I'm just living it out loud, I'm living it out loud. When you say that word is big, it is big. Because on a, on, a, on a daily basis, on a daily yes. basis, <laughs> yeah. you hear it, yeah. you see it, at moments you have to embrace mm-hmm. it. And it's challenging sometimes when you have to embrace that transformation because, and you said it earlier about sometimes you want to stop that change, you know, and you can yeah. stop it. But that transformation, you cannot. You cannot stop a transformation. And and, and, the, and the thing is, the most validating experience, and you said it, is that you are put into a position to uphold that transformation. A lot of times in transformations, you are put in a position so people can understand and translate the power you have because the power you have is so metaphysical. It's so beyond conceivable thought. It's so divine. And so you have to humanize it by putting yourself in a position. And so a lot of times transformations, there is a position that you have to hold. And it will only hold with the integrity of you honoring the transformation of its completion. Yeah. And it's difficult. It is it's challenging. It's very difficult. It is very, man, you, if I can tell real. you the conversations I'll be having with self. <laughs> I, People don't. People think I just wanted to be an owner of an institute. Right. I did not want this. I did not. You couldn't tell me 10, 12 years ago that I was going to be here. I didn't want to do any of this. I didn't want this. I didn't want my own company. I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't even know what that was. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know what I didn't. I just wanted to heal people. I wanted to help people and play music at night. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to do none of this. I don't want to have to do taxes. I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't. I had no. But. The only way that I could make sense for all the work I did on myself, all the things that I learned, all the techniques that I had chosen to learn, all the ways of learning the holistic wellness, creating my own model, making my own research, all those things were adjustments and changes needed to say that I have this thing that can help the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had to make, put myself in the position of, to be an owner, mm-hmm. to give myself permission to change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the transformation. I look back and I look back on it like I'm so glad I had that crappy job at the residential facility or the psych ward or the because now my experiences will not deny me anymore. Mm. I like that. I, I'm gonna take some of that. I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna take some of that. <laughs> I'm gonna take some of that. I, I like that. I, I like that. Yeah. I like that one. All right. Now, I love what you said. I, I love that. Um, like I said, I'm going to take some of that. So how can our listeners, how can one navigate the challenges that often accompany with personal transformation? Because I just said it's challenging. So how can they navigate through that? Mm. This is this is where you have to fall back into your purpose. What is the purpose of my moment? Right. And in and, and my rule of thumb, my principle five, I have my five principles. Principle five is purpose is the human compass. So you have to ask yourself, is what I'm experiencing aligned with my purpose? Why am I here? What is this supposed to do for me? It's about a redirection. So when you're experiencing challenges, challenges dissociate you, challenges distract you, challenges divide you. And you have to turn back in. And ask yourself, what do you need and what do you want from this? And you'll learn, as most people do in their purpose and their transformation, is that they realize that the moment no longer has the resource it needs for you to continue and be sustainable. So you do have to move on. Mm -hmm. And are you ready to accept and embrace that? Because the transformation is going to happen with or without you. And if it happens without you, you're not going to be put in the position. And it's going to make you have to work even twice as hard. And your transformation is going to be a transformation, but it may not be aligned with your purpose. And you have to wait for the next transformation in your life because you didn't learn. It's almost like a karmic cycle. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Can you, <laughs> no, you know why I say that? It's because, you know, when, you, when you're watching something happening to someone and it's just a, a complete 
just over and over and you like you don't, you don't see you don't see that you don't feel that you know why mm-hmm. you keep like you, you know what i'm saying like huh yes yes um it, it actually just happened to me i almost got into a karmic cycle recently and i i acknowledged it and i had to adjust and oh my god i would have been i would have had to, i would have lost my own transformation i was so close <laughs> I was, I was, I was this close. I almost lost it. And I was like, and I saw it happening in slow motion too. I was like, this is about to be me. I was like, no, let me step back. Yeah. I really stepped back. I became still and I watched it pass through. And the beautiful thing about it is the fact that I had the discipline and the discernment to embrace the transformation. I actually benefited on the long run with the same issue. My issue now became a benefit to me because I actually respected the moment that was mm-hmm. needed. Mm-hmm. It's, it's beautiful that there is a reward from the discipline. There is reward in discipline. That's one thing I can say. Even if you're the best, sometimes you don't get the best thing when you are the best. But right. I will say you do get reward in discipline. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Here's another question. In your experience, what are some of the most effective strategies for embracing and sustaining a positive change during this transformational journey? Now, I heard you say about Mm -hmm. one, but what, like for you? Yeah, I think I think being able to pause and do an inventory, a a personal inventory check. So I think about my eight my eight health modalities, right? The, The the physical, the emotional the social, the family, the spiritual, the educational, the environmental, the financial, right? I think about how is my life being pooled? Because a lot of times in life, unfortunately, because of the way we live life, we are always pulled by something. Mm-hmm. That's just how our culture is. Yeah. It's not because you're just special. No, like everybody's being pulled by something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to ask yourself, what are you being pulled by? Why? And how long? Right. So the three things, what am I tolerating? What am I enduring? And what am I being patient about? So the three things, tolerance, endurance, patience. And a lot of times we never say, well, I'm a patient person or I'm impatient. If you're impatient, it just means that you don't know what you're waiting for. If you're patient, it means you know what you're waiting for. That's the difference. That's the difference between an impatient person and a patient person. They just understand what they're waiting for and they know what's worth it for them. Right. And then endurance is just understanding how long are you willing to accept the way things are. And then tolerance is what level or magnitude of the experience do you want to accept and embrace right now? Mm-hmm. So tolerance, endurance, patience. Those are the three things. Oh, I love that. I love that. Did y'all get your purpose paper and purpose pen? I didn't have mine, but yeah. I'm going to go back and look at the, and listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> What? I do that in my relationship topic. I use those three for my relationship topic. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. All right, so let's do this. Let's take a quick break, and then when we come back. We're going to talk about the roles of the word. Mm-hmm. How to facilitate it, all right? It's your girl, D-Goddess, Nami Banks, here on the Season of Self Love Podcast, and we'll be right back. Get ready for an exciting month of inspiration and empowerment on Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap. Join us every Thursday at 6 p.m. live on AskNaomi.com or dive into the conversation on Naomi's World YouTube channel. Mark your calendars for May 23rd as we welcome fitness instructor, nutritionist, and owner of Phoenix Tribe Fitness, Marcy Scott, who has transformed her life and is here to guide you towards healthier living and healing. And wrapping up the month on May 30th, don't miss our special guest, a neuroscientist turned adult content creator and fishing influencer. Isla Moon, bringing a unique perspective to the conversation. Tune in all month long for these incredible guests and more, only on Ask Naomi Bridging the Gap. Let's bridge the gap together. All right, well, welcome back. It's Security Goddess Nami Banks here on the Season of Self Love podcast, and I am here with Dr. Real, our resident. Therapist, hey, hey. Hey, I'm delightful and dedicated. 
delightful and dedicated. I'm liking that. I'm loving that. Yes. All right. Yes. As you guys know, May has been the month of us using our words impeccably. And the word today is transformation. Um, thus far, I have been loving this conversation. Mm. Mm. I truly have been loving this um this conversation. And you know, I know before the break, I was going to talk about the the role of the words of facilitating transformation. But mm. I want to share this story with you. And I think we talked a little bit about when me and you talked the other day. Mm -hmm. And um more of the strategies on how to um embrace and realize when you're going through a transformation. Um, but I'm getting ready to tell you in real time what happened with me when I realized um, that the work that I've truly been doing have been working. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, the other day I was having a conversation with my, with my mom and I came out my room and my question was about prayer. <laughs> it was it was about prayer. It was about prayer. Uh -huh. And and I went in here and I asked her about, you know, her prayer. And, you know, once she, you know, once she says her prayer, what does she do next? Does she just sit and wait? Or is there an action behind it? You know, or what do you do? Mm -hmm. And um, she said, Well, I just wait for God to show me. And so my next question to her was, Well how does it show up to you? Does it show up to you as that's not what I want? That's not what I was looking for. So I'm just going, you know, bypass it or what? And so in that process of me asking her that she went all the way back to, I think it was like 19, maybe 68. And she started talking about that 1968. Mm. Yes. And so as I'm sitting there <laughs> and she's going through this conversation, I couldn't stop the conversation. I couldn't do anything. I just had to be in that moment there, there, right there. And so there were seven, several things that I knew that I had to accept. And so I had to embrace the change and also be resilient at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I had to ex embrace the change and be resilient at the same time. And now you're like, what does that mean, Naomi? Yeah. Because you stay, you're, you're there in the moment right now today. But that loved one and that person is somewhere else. Mm. You remember this. So for you, your resilience is knowing that this is changing. Right now, this is transforming in front of your eyes. So you have to embrace it. And you have to understand that you only can show up for her the way that she needs you to show up for her right now. So if that's me being somebody in 1968 for her, then that's who I have to be. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. And that is, there's, I have so many questions, but I, I, I feel like who you had to be, who you have to be and who you were, were, we're all working in the same thing, in the same timeline. Yeah. That's really, that's really big. Yeah. And so as I'm sitting there, as I'm sitting there, one, I had to practice self-compassion. Mm. I had to practice self-compassion. I had to be kind with myself in that moment, meaning that there was nothing that I did wrong in this situation. Also meaning that I have to be compassionate to her as well. So me sitting mm. there, um, knowing that you have no control over this. You have no control. You have to sit in it, girl. You have to sit in it. You have to allow the process to happen and just be there. Just be there. And for me, it has been hard because I am a control freak too. I'm working on that. 
but I'm also a recovering perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So understanding that, you know, I was like, wow. And so understanding now embracing this change and embracing a resilience. This is one of the strategies that I had to use was, and we talk about practicing self-compassion in that moment I had Mm -hmm. to be be there, right there. And I had to acknowledge the feelings that I was expressing. Even when I left out of the room, when I left out of the room, I had to understand what was going on with me. I had to understand why I was crying, but why I held that cry in so it wouldn't fear her. Right, exactly. Yeah. It wouldn't trigger her. You know, so then going out, I was like, okay, go through it. It's going to be all right. This is what it is. This is what it is. So when, right. so the thing is, is it's still in my mom's room. I had to stay present. I had to focus on whatever that was happening in this moment with her and I. And I had to be present there. Mm -hmm. Part of that is the resilience. is being there and understanding what is happening right now. So I know I talk about a lot of times about being in the moment Mm -hmm. and honoring what is happening in the moment. Whether I Mm -hmm. like it or not, I have to respect it. Yeah. And a lot of people villainize their, they villainize that discomfort. Yeah. They villainize the, the abruptness of it or the possibility of what it might do to them. And to the point where they actually avoid themselves, you know? And so it takes a lot of resilience yeah. to embrace that because what you come out from that though, once again, you get the reward in your discipline. Yeah. Yeah. You can get through anything, but if you don't have no discipline, you won't get the reward. Yeah. I can get through anything, but mm-hmm. if I don't have any discipline through that experience, there's no reward. Yeah. And you know what? For me, I understand because I can I be I've never been a real disciplined person. Really, I, I I don't believe I have, but I believe this right here has allowed me to step in that realm. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, some people, some people have don't have discipline because they actually care about their standards. Mm-hmm. There's, the, I know very, I know a lot of successful people that just have, they are very self critiquing of their standards, mm-hmm. which then makes them act upon a level of execution. Mm-hmm. But people that are disciplined are willing to be in the process and willing to learn themselves through the process. They want to go through that. Some people don't have to actually go through that. They can just have higher standards and then live through that mm-hmm. experience itself. Those mm-hmm. are very big. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the next one was embracing the uncertainty. Understanding mm-hmm. that the transformation that often comes with uncertainty. I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate uncertainty so much because it means that the rules haven't been created yet. That was my 12 year old was saying to me. (laughs) I'm telling you, it's real. It is real. It is so real. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, once you, because once once I I get to know that I get to make the rules, you know, I tell people, like, if you really want to learn how to be really good at being successful, learn how to play board games. Learn how to play games again. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't know the rules, you will never win. You have to know the rules. Mm-hmm. You know, the sports would be boring if there weren't rules. Like, let's, if anybody could travel in basketball, if traveling wasn't a roast, you know how boring basketball would be? That'd but be they terrible. do. But they do now. It's so let me take, because you know, they do now. <laughs> uh huh. Uh-huh. They do now. And that's why it's been very hard for, I know it's a little bit off topic, but you brought it in there. It's been very hard to kind of watch a lot of times because I did go by the road. This is how I played basketball in high school and part of my college life was, Mm -hmm. you know, this was a part of the rules. They changed those rules. Yeah. They changed what what it could look like. Yeah. So you can, you can do Mm -hmm. like five steps, three, two, Mm -hmm. you can travel. Like, 
Yeah, and so for me, it's the 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 game is not as genuine as it used to be. Okay, that, that mm-hmm. that's all I that I had to share. With you Ooh, well, you went that. there. <laughs> I was like, I, I got I a little personal about that one. <laughs> what, 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 how do you really feel about that? He said, he said, "I'm gonna pause real quick and let you know how I feel." That know that game you that game you were watching that WNBA play and that and that got you going. <laughs> that's that's it did, because actually she traveled. <laughs> And they didn't call it. They called the charge on the other girl. They didn't call it. <laughs> see, this is, see, look, <laughs> that, that's the other, that's the other podcast we were doing. That's the other podcast we were doing. <laughs> you have a WNBA special. Like, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. But my apologies. Go ahead, Dr. Rib. You're like, I don't even know where I was at. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just think that when, when you when you can learn the rules and when you understand rules and when you understand the discipline, you actually do break the rules when you have discipline because you learn what the rules were so well that you actually you know, learn how to step. Exactly. You know how to change it. You know how to change it to make them fit you and still be playing the exactly. game. Exactly. And that's why I just can't like when people are learning like my my instruments and I'm teaching them instruments and I'm like. This is how you we play a C. This is how we play. Like, well, you don't play like that. That's because I'm beyond what you're doing. I need you to understand the foundation, because then you'll make your own rules once you've learned to master what was been taught. Yeah. You know, once once you master, once you become a master, even in martial arts, you end up making your own form. You can end up making your own style because of you mastering so many different art forms. Right. Right. Eventually, you learn yourself if you truly do it right. You learn yourself. Don't learn the art. You learn yourself. Yeah, I like that. I got what you were saying. I just had when you said that travel, I said, <laughs> but I got, I, I did. I, I understood. <laughs> we ain't drink, we ain't eating chicken wings or beers. Like we we have that was straight porn talk. I was like, oh, we going there? I was like, let me get, let me hurry up because you about to talk. You about to talk to me out of statistics. I was like, oh. <laughs> you about to get me on that one? I was like, oh, I don't, I don't got that. I don't got that. <laughs> yeah. uh-uh. All right, so for are there any more strategies that you know that you can add on this to just for how to, so they can navigate through this through transformation? How can they how can they navigate? Do you have any more strategies? I think I gave you yeah any. yeah I, I I think we kind of missed this during the talk actually. How do you know when you're actually in a transformation? A lot of times people don't recognize it until what we said, until it's like done and you look back. Yeah. But 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 you can have foresight. Mm-hmm. You can have that. And 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 one of the biggest ways to understand that you're going through a transformation is when you feel like you don't make sense to other people. Or when other people that you care about no longer start making sense to you, mm-hmm. or they don't understand you, or they don't consider you. And and you have no ill intention or malintent, and it keeps feeling like a pushback. Oh, yes. So yes. I want people to understand that, too. It's not just something when you look back from, but it's also things start stop making sense to you. Can I say it feels uncomfortable when the conversations that you have, they feel mm-hmm. so inauthentic? Yes. But see, you can't use a big word like that. So you got to break that down. So go ahead and just break that down. Mm-hmm. That means it's not real. It's not genuine. It's like you're, and I'm being real. It's like you're sitting there and you, you're you hearing. But for me is womp, 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 womp. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. And I... I Mm, this happened this happened today and i was sitting here like you told you told me what you needed why are you still here what what do you want i gave you a hug bye and you're and you're still you're still talking to me about it we did the closure i did the closure i did the you know i get the goodbye thing and you missed the social cues you know and so now i'm sitting here and i'm just like what do they what do they need to feel like they can leave Right, because no, I just took it. I just now took you it. know better. Put your hand out so I can slap your hand. <laughs> they were just excited. They were just excited, and they they want to keep working. They were inspired, you know. And it's like, no, for me, it's like go do the work. 
because you can't get anything more from me now. You learn what you did. Now you got to go do your own thing. And then you'll come back later and then we'll have a higher conversation. Because sometimes I'm realizing in my own transformation that a lot of my conversations stopped and then we left. And now they come back on a different level and then they recognize, oh, wow, well, you really took some time out to really be patient with me. Yes. Because everybody deserves that. Yeah. You know, because eventually I'm I'm not going to be able to tolerate this. Yeah. And my endurance is going to get low. Yeah. You know, and so I just think it's important for people to understand that you have to know when you don't make sense. Yeah. You have to know what it feels like not to make sense. Yeah. It's okay to not make sense because that means that you're going somewhere to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. No. You know, I, mm, that, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause like more than lately, I've been seeing it in real time. Oof. Yes. And mm. you know, we had a conversation last week about some mm -hmm. of the girlfriends. Why did I have another phone call? A person called and they hung up on me because I was laughing. <laughs> and I was laughing at myself because. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! I mean, are you sitting in? Are you sitting here listening to this conversation just so non-authentic? Like you literally just talked about this, and you're sitting here and you're listening to this. And it don't make no sense to you. And what you said to her is really not making no sense. So it's like, wah, 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 wah. And what I are just we doing? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? You know, and, and I didn't want to bring this up. I didn't want to bring this up, but that story just that 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 triggered me. And it's like, because I had a moment of a musical, not saying a musical lifetime, but like it's one of those moments where like we have the opportunity to musically hit another level of success and experience. Yeah. And this is something that doesn't happen every day, especially in our area. And it's like, hey, we got a chance to really show who we are at a main industry level. This is something that you have to pay five to six thousand dollars to experience minimum. Just minimum, just to be like, can I do it? Like, yeah, just put a deposit of 6000 down and we can we'll consider you. That's that kind of moment. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, because of what I do and because of how I look at things, I was able to get it for free. And I was like, let's take advantage of this opportunity. 100%. Anybody would, like, sacrifice, like, you know. And the amount of questions, pushback, uncertainty, not understanding self-research you know the lack of and willingness discipline engagement curiosity i was getting upset because i didn't even answer the questions i just there as the question i didn't even answer i was like just letting you know it's not going to happen it's okay and then they're like well it sounds like this would have been a really good offer that's at that, I can't even entertain the, the, the thought process simply because I understand where I was at. Yeah. I was, I'm already, I've already world toured. I've already done the national touring circuit. I've already done. And so I know when something is going to be it and when it's not, when it should be, when it shouldn't, when I understand it all. And I thought I would have a moment to offer that. And I realized that in my transformation, I have done so much as an artist, DIY, that I don't even get mad about it. What I learned is I have to accept, I'm like, oh, this is where we're at. Well, let me take the pressure off myself. Because it doesn't matter how well I explain it. It doesn't matter how good I list why this is important and beneficial. You are already meant to misunderstand. Yeah. 
because you were never you were you never wanted that. I had to release myself of that. And so responded back in the email, just say, hey, don't have the right personnel. Thank you. But if you do have offers for other opportunities or send, you know, please let me know. Yeah. But at that moment, I realized that there's going to be a timeline on this. Yeah. That's it. You know, and I think for me, my transformation was understanding that I have gotten to a place that no longer can entertain mediocrity. Yeah. I still love, still care, still, but I can't entertain. I don't have, I don't have to over explain something that I'm offering. Yeah. That's just, and that's not because I'm better than anybody else. It's not because I have an awareness that has a responsibility. And my transformation has allowed me to understand the expectation of myself and my leadership. Yeah. And so I think for me, transformation is the definition of ownership Mm. in the position you were geared to be. And I think that is... That ownership is empowerment. That that's empowerment. That's self empowerment. I'm empowering myself to own my position. And I think a lot of times people have never been empowered to own themselves in their position. They've always been told to perform at their yeah. position, never to be. And that's the difference. I own. I don't. I don't try to perform anything. I am. Mm-hmm. And so, I had to let that go. I almost fell into my ego in that. And I was like, whoo, I caught myself. And I had to let that go. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that's, I think that transformation alone, it gave me peace about future musical endeavors. Because yeah. now I know where I'm at. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that because as you were saying that, that was my laughter. <laughs> mm-hmm. I started laughing because I was like, I, I was going crazy. I was giggling. Cause I was like, I was like, you gotta be kidding me! I'm literally putting it, I'm putting, I'm putting, I'm putting the steak on the table, and you're asking if it's meat. I'm like, what? What do you want me? To, what more do you want me to do? Want me right. to bring you the farm? Right. And you really farm you right at at? Yourself, like, are you really sitting here? Like, like, are you really sitting here? <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing here? What are, What are we doing? I can't. I'm out. I'm out. All right. Timeline put. The timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what's the good thing is that we can laugh about this, listeners. My 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 beautiful um, seasonal love. Pe- I don't. I still don't have a name for you all yet. But the the thing is, is that we are nowhere trying to be perfect. But what we're Mm-mm, trying to I'm do over that. is is live a life that we can truly learn from. We can learn and embrace and be our peaceful, imperfective self as we continue yeah. to grow in who we are. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. I hope it does, because <laughs> I think that was it. That's the answer. That's there's, I can't say anything after that. That is the answer right there. That is it. That's it. That is it. That means that you can be truly happy with who you are in all of your imperfections. And all, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. The thing is, is that what I realize is that it's going to take a minute for us to truly get there all the way. If we ever get there all the way, because there is something there. But as long as we acknowledge it and know that and we know how to, you know, rearrange that for that moment in that time. Does that make sense? Yes. And, and I'm telling you, I, oh, I, people think I just pull the trigger on things and like, oh, you just decided to willy nilly. I'm like. No, when I know, I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and even if it is, even, let's say it's wrong. Let's just say it's wrong. I learn from it, and then I'm going to keep going. I don't, like, I aim twice, strike once. Is this the right thing to do? Where are some outcomes I could deal with? I can get the good, bad, and the ugly. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because at the end of the day, I have to keep going. Yeah. I have to keep transforming. I have to keep changing. I have to keep adjusting. 
because I was not meant to be stuck still or stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Never. Yeah. That's not human. It's not human to be still stuck and stopped. Yeah. We have to keep going. Yeah. And we have to embrace that uncertainty, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's do this. Let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, when we come back, I want to, um, there's something that I'm trying, you kind of reminded me the other day when you and I talked about, you know, the month of May and the week being um, uh, mental awareness, mental health awareness. Mm, mm-hmm. And so during the next two weeks, I want to kind of do where we're doing two um, meditation. So I want to end, mm-hmm. you know, every day this week in a nice meditation. But let's take a break and then we'll come mm-hmm. back. And then we can go ahead and go into a nice guided meditation. All right. It's your girl, goddess Nami Banks here on the Season of Self Love Podcast. And we will be right back. Washington Wellness Institute focuses on healing always. For me, if I look good, then I feel good. If I feel good, then I share the good. If I share the good, then I celebrate the good. If I celebrate the good, then I live the good. So I can be paid to be my greatest. But I have to learn the good to be the good. So, what does it take to be the greatest? It's as simple as a free 15 minute consultation. Be kind to yourself and heal always. All right, welcome back. I told you I was gonna be real quick then. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I just got done talking. I was like, wait a second. No, it was real, real quick. All right. Uh, so welcome back again to the Season of Self Love Podcast. As we are ending um, this episode, I can say, I, you know, we're going to be taking a, a summer break. We're going to be taking a summer break. And so in these last two weeks, I just want to make sure that we are truly closing off this first season. And when we come back in the next season, that, you know, we coming back and we just growing and elevating even more. But also in the process that I understood that even through us going through this self-discovery and, you know, we trying to find that love within ourselves and all that stuff, sometimes it can be very overwhelming, even within an episode, even within an episode. And so with this episode, in the real time I experienced and saw my transformation. And I, not only that, but I had to embrace it gracefully. Does that make sense? I had to embrace it gracefully. Mm. And so with this, um, Mm. with this meditation that I kind of set with for a minute, this is where I want it to go to where you can evolve in it and understand what it is. And I know Dr. Will said, he said, this is a big word. And not only is it a big word, but it's um, a great evolution because it's, it's always elevating. It's always coming into something new when we transform and we don't even know how it, it happened. You say, how do we acknowledge it? You said a bit when the conversations become um, unfamiliar or where, like I said, go one, 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 but still in that process, we're still sitting. Is that really it? That's how I end up laughing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's how you ended yeah. up where you, you are because we still at that moment, still where we second guessing it, but we move mm-hmm. forward. I moved three days later and be like, oh, that's what that was. Right. But how can we acknowledge it in that moment? I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, so for me, just embracing the transfer and giving grace to myself, not only the self-compassion, but the grace. And so allowing it to happen the way that it's supposed to happen and me understanding that Mm -hmm. there is no certain way that it's supposed to do it. There are lessons yeah. and things that I'm supposed to learn through this transformation, however it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think, I, I, just, I hope that as you continue, you continue to teach people about embracing grace. Because um, a lot of times we feel unworthy of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So thank you just for acknowledging that. Mm-hmm. 
Sophia, welcome. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you all to just get comfortable while we go into this. All right, let's take this moment to just pause for your ass and just get comfortable for a moment. Now I want you to close your eyes, take a deep breath in, fill in your lungs with positivity and light. Now I want you to exhale slowly, releasing any tension or resistance that you may be holding on to. I want you to visualize a serene garden filled with blooming flowers and gentle butterflies. And as you walk through this garden, I want you to feel the warmth of the sun on your skin and the soft breeze on your face. I want you to embrace the beauty of this moment and open your heart to the possibilities for transformation. Now with each breath, I want you to affirm to yourself that you are ready to embrace change with the grace and openness and allow yourself to let go of any doubts or fears, surrendering to the flow of life's transformative journey. I want you to feel a sense of peace and acceptance wash over you, filling you with courage and inner strength. I want you to trust in your ability to navigate change with grace and resilience. Now when you are ready, I want you to gently bring your awareness back to the present moment. I want you to carry this sense of grace and transformation with you as you continue your day. Yes, I said, give us a little bit more time. That was, woo. Um, Mm-hmm. First of all, I want to thank you all for just sharing that space with us right there in there. And um, when I thought about that this the other day, and like I said, it's from the conversation that we had. And I was like, okay, let's put something different in. And when when doing this show, when I say things be happening in real time for me, it does. Dr. Will, when I say when I, this, the season of self-love, it's not just for people out there. It's for me too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just because life be lifening. I did a mm-hmm. thing the other day. I think it was last Friday. And now my new hobby is gardening. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of things I use um, with different things with gardening and how it applies to my life. You know what I'm saying? And how it allowing me to grow and to transform or to um, to be just something different in my life so I can see it in a different perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I guess I, I want to make sure that I just want to make sure that this experience and that I am, I am doing, I am showing up the way God needs me to show up. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, that I am showing up the way that He needs me. Checkpoint. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Not only for myself, but for others, and I have to show people this is how I treat myself. So when I sit here, that this is this is what you get, <laughs> you know, this is what you get. And so you can take yeah. that and, you know, be like, oh, OK. All right. It's all right. OK, it's all right. I'm, I'm still working on it and I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. I'm going to be phenomenal with it. You, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. and even within there, it was talking about having courage. Even for you all to listen to this on a daily or however, it takes courage to do that. It does. Because a lot of people don't want to look at their shit. And let's just be honest. They don't. Mm-hmm. They don't. Yeah. You know, the other day, I heard that apology from Puffy. Oh. And I was like, for real. Bad timing. Bad timing. You know, you first. You first. 
you first. <laughs> you know, and I guess it's for somebody ha has for me that has done so much work on myself, and I'm nowhere. I ain't. I'm not even nowhere. Nothing like any of that. But what I I knowing that you've done something wrong to someone else, you cannot be that unhuman to not understand what you have done to people. And I guess maybe I'm so naive is that somewhere you have to have a heart, you have to have a conscience, you have to have something to know that you can't keep living life like that, that it's going to come back and, and, and haunt you in a way that might not even hit you, but hit your kids. So you're not even thinking about your kids or your kids' kids. You understand what I'm saying? Or you, you know, this is how generational curses happen. Hmm. You know, so when looking at that and understanding that, a lot of people don't want to look at this, at that, at they shit. And even though he used the words, well, I went to go get therapy and I worked. Yeah, I went to get there. I went to therapy and, I, and yeah. stuff like this. No, because if you did, you wouldn't have never put out that what's the name before about what well, they just trying to do. Time, truth. time tells truth or whatever. Yeah. It tells time or right? time tells truth. Yeah. You wouldn't have never done any of those things. Mm -hmm. None of those. So what I think is you never stopped. No, yeah. Never. So what I'm saying for all of you all, when you come in here, and even the ones that write the letters, thank you. Because it does, it takes a lot of courage to be open yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um hear me out on this, okay? It's gonna mm -hmm. this is gonna be a this is gonna be a lot, I'm gonna say. Two things. One on 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 Diddy's situation on just doing the post. Say their names. You the whole conversation. You never said their name. You never said their name, which means that you've dissociated the humanity of that person's existence in your life because saying their name would have affected you more emotionally. Then, especially with the charge being dropped, right? The case being dropped, there's no there's no liability at that point, right? It was dropped. So if you can't say their name, means that you are not healed from the situation. Those that are in traumatic situations or have been involved in trauma, whether you're a victim or abuser, doesn't matter. If you cannot speak of the situation in peace, you are still within the trauma. You healed with your trauma, not from it. Mm. And mm. because you healed with your trauma, you continued the cycle of the behavior because you have never been held accountable. And unfortunately, the justice system will never heal you. The justice system will pause you, maybe stop you from doing what you want, but it'll never stop you from running, continuing the traumatic cycle that you continue to put on to other people. And the second thing is, we all, when I was reading the comments, embracing grace. A lot of people were speaking up. Those same people also didn't believe Meg. A lot of those same people also said free Tory. So... I also want to understand the the the, con the collective conscious of grace, and how especially in Black culture, we give grace to to non Blacks in a way that we would never give ourselves. So as a collective conscious, I also was very sad because I saw so many people deny yeah. and avoid and not talk about their own stuff. I would I didn't post anything under the the post because I know that I've done things in my life that I've hurt other people. And so I'm not here to tell you what you should do or what you shouldn't do or what. No, 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 no. Let me work on myself mm -hmm. because I need to say the names of the people that I've hurt and be able to say my story. 
And so I, it, if anything, that, that, that video made me make sure that I was being accountable in my own life mm -hmm. rather than focusing on what he was doing, mm -hmm. what he didn't do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, true healers, people that are healing and people that are truly in healing, mm -hmm. they'll take something that's outside of them and they'll redirect it back into them to check, make sure that they're okay first before mm -hmm. they put anything else out there for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And that's how I know that this wasn't from a genuine place in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I didn't want to go there, but that just, you know, when you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just leave it right there. Cause, you know, yeah. That's yeah, because that's a, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a whole, that's a whole nother thing. All right, my beautiful people. Well, of course, you know, we always have a good time here. We always go over, over our, our, our <laughs> limit, right? <laughs> well, today, you know, we have explored on, you know, how powerful you know, our words can be was truly embracing transformation. Again, I want to thank you, Dr. Will, for always coming, joining me, tag teaming me right here on this, um, on here, right here on a season of self love. And to my listeners, I want you to remember that every word that you choose can pave the path to new beginnings. And I want you to keep embracing your journey of self love and transformation. So until the next time, I want you to continue to explore the power of impeccable words. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Season of Self Love podcast. And we hope that you enjoyed this fun field with inspiration, empowerment, and self discovery. Remember, practicing self love is a journey and not a destination. For more information and to stay connected with us, visit our website at the Season of Self Love podcast.com. And if you have any suggestions or questions, or feedback, feel free to shoot us an email at seasonofselflove at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for daily doses of self-love tips, motivation, and community support. So join our Facebook group, The Season of Self-Love, to connect with like-minded individuals on their journey to self-discovery and self-compassion. Thank you again for being a part of our community and dedicating to nurturing self-love and embracing self-worth. So stay tuned for more exciting episodes and guests in the next season. And remember, you are worthy of love, kindness, and all the happiness in the world. So until next time, take care of yourself and spread love wherever you go. See you soon.